this is Gina. Today I will be showing you how to make this really cute little butterfly component necklace and some purse charms. It's really easy, pretty fast, especially the little charms. They turn out really cute. Now this is a tutorial for the first treasure box, Summer Sparkle. However, if you are interested in making these um, pieces, Shirley at budgetbeads.shop is putting together a couple of co component packages so that you can make something very similar. The pieces aren't exactly the same, but they're very, very similar. So if you'd like to make the purse charms, and I think she's going to try to put something together for the necklace too, but I know for sure the purse charms. And so if you would like to do what I'm doing with these purse charms, um, you will go to her... Um, shop. It's budgetbeads.shop. I will post direct links to the packages she's putting together in the comments and in the description box beneath the video player if you'd like to do this. Now I have to apologize for the lapse in time for this tutorial. Um, I was going to post it last weekend. However, my mother was hospitalized. She's okay now, but that kind of set me back. So I am going to go ahead and post this. I'll probably make one more tutorial of some of the things that were still in that box. But I have the next box ready and I'm going to go ahead and um, do the unboxing next for that. My next video will be that. And we'll start working on that one too. But we can always come back to the components or even mix the components from the first box with the second one too. Um, like I said, if you're interested in making these, head on over to budgetbeads.shop and you'll find the components. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started on these projects. Okay, so first thing I am going to show you with this great big crystal, this ginormous crystal that I put in the box, I am going to make a purse charm. So any of the bigger crystals you have or anything that you find that might be a little bit bolder than your taste for a necklace or something like that, though I've had some people comment that they would wear this as a pendant too, um, you most definitely can use this as a necklace pendant. But I'm making purse charms out of them. I've included this clasp here, the, a swivel clasp in the box, and I put a um, pinch bail on your pendant already. So your pendant should have this large pinch bail on it so that you can access it. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to modify this pendant a little, or this pinch bail a little bit, and I'm going to make a purse charm. Now with this one, I put a butterfly underneath the pinch bail, and I think with this one, I'm going to put the, one of the little flower um, charms that we have. Now, you only have a few of these, so if you want to make something else with them, you don't have to do that either. You can always just, like I did here, you can dangle things off of the actual um, clasping. You do not have to do it the way I'm going to do it here. But there's a lot of ideas that you can do with this. But I'm going to show you a very simple way of doing this. Now, let me get my class, my stuff together here. The first thing I want to do is this big lar large bale on the top has a little um, connector. And this connector does not open. So I cannot put it onto my swivel clasp by just opening it. So I'm just going to remove it and I'm going to put a jump ring on it. So what I'm going to be using in this tutorial in your um, box, or even if you don't have a box, but in your box you will find some larger size and a little bit smaller size jump rings. I'm going to use a few of those each. I'm going to add to it some head pins. These are little ball head pins. You can get these at budgetbeads.shop and I will leave a link. You can get any of your findings there that you would like. I think she even has some clasps like this, some swivel things if you'd like, and um, if you want to make some purse charms. She has a few others in different motifs that will work too. So anything that's got a nice large hook or clasp on the end of it so that you can put it on your purse will work just fine. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my wire cutters and I'm just going to cut through the narrow part of this connector here. It's very narrow on the bottom 
it is closed so I can't just open it. It, it is soldered shut. So I'm going to try to cut this. These are very dull cutters, so let me grab another pair. I've killed those. I've used them for years, and I killed them. So let's try this pair. I'm just going to cut through this. And once you get through it, then you can just pull it off, just like that. And, of course, that's destroyed now, so make sure that's what you want to do. And then I'm just going to take one of my jump rings. And these jump rings are already open. So I can just take it and I can just drop it on this pinch bail right here. And I can close it. Just by twisting them together. Wiggle it a little bit. Make sure it's closed tight. <clears throat> and now that is prepared to where I can drop it on my... Um, swivel clasp. So all I have to do is open my jump ring. And I apologize, my hands are beat up. I, I've i been making the next box and I just have beat up my hands. So I, I apologize, but can't help it. Now, so what I'm going to do is <clears throat> on this one, you can see that I have this butterfly, the one that is diagonally um, positioned so that it has the connectors on either side here. And I will show you when we get to the butterflies. There are some that are straight across. They have connectors on either side. And there's some that have connectors diagonal. I used the diagonal on this one, if that's what you would like to do. And then connected a few things to it on the bottom here with head pins and um, eye pins. <clears throat> but on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that. Now we're going to just very gently put our chain nose pliers inside this little um, pinch bail and we're just going to open the pliers gently and open the pinch bail at the same time. Now you can see my pinch bail is open now and I'm holding one end still inside the pendant hole and then this side is open and then I'm just going to slide this little charm underneath it. Now you can use any charm you want that has a nice flat little connector on the top. You use the butterfly, you use the flower, use something that you have in your own stash if you're using your own crystal and you're doing this with your own stuff. And then I'm just going to pinch it shut again. So I've placed that flower right on top there, just like that. And now I can go ahead and connect things to it. So I'm going to just figure out what I want to use. We have these little flower beads and I thought they would be really cute with this flower bead. So these are in the box and there's I think 10 of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide that onto one of my head pins just like this. And then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers. And I don't have them out, of course. Let me grab them. And I am going to place my round nose pliers at the tip of, or right against the flower, right here, and not too far down. The further down that you place your wire on your pliers is how big your loop will be, of course. So then after I've placed it there, I'm going to bend that wire over the top of the plier, so kind of back over the back part of the plier, and then I'm going to turn my wrist and place my pliers vertically in that bend I've just created in the wire. Bring the wire over the top of the plier again, just right over the top. As I do that, I'll bring it down and under and kind of bring my wrist forward, manipulating that wire into a loop like this. Then I'll grab my frat flat nose pliers, not my frat, and I will grab onto that loop. I'm going to switch hands so that I hold this in my left hand and I my right hand is free to go ahead and turn this a little bit. So now I'm going to take this excess wire and I have my round nose pliers. Of course you can use your chain nose pliers. It's probably be easier, but I'm just going to start turning my wire around until I have a nice tight wrap just like this and then I'm going to take my cutters here and I'm going to get as close as I can with my flesh cut cutters cut that off 
and then I will get my chain nose pliers and I will tuck that little tail in. Which is always the hardest part of a wrap. That little tail can be a real challenge to get tucked in. So let me see if I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so now I have a component that I can use to connect to my little flowers with jump rings, of course, because I made it closed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make several little things. Like on here, I made <clears throat> a couple of different connectors. And here I wrapped one of the 8x6 crystals and then um, with a head pin and then on the bottom I attached a flower and a jump ring and then made a couple more. So I'm going to make a couple more little wrapped things and then we'll come back and connect them to the um, crystal and connect the, the crystal to the clasp and we'll put this together. So just go ahead and wrap a few of the things that you have. Now we also have some hearts. You could wrap a couple of those, whatever you'd like. Go ahead and wrap a few beads that you have and we'll come back and connect them together. Okay, so now you can see that I have made several little components here. Some of them on head pins, so they have a loop on either side, and some of them, excuse me, some of them on eye pins, so that they have a loop on either side, and some of them on head pins, so that I can attach some of the ones on the head pins to the ones on eye pins also with a jump ring. So I'm going to, I have a couple of my smaller jump rings and a couple of my bigger jump rings. And the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> so that I can attach some of it to the clasp itself is I'm going to attach this jump ring we put on the pendant pinch bail onto the clasping. So I am going to grab a hold of this jump ring with my chain nose here and try to find the opening. There it is. All right. So I'm just going to open this. by placing my pliers on either side of the opening and just twisting it open and putting it on the clasp and then closing it. Now, if you wanted to make it both sides, of course, you could put another flower on the other side too if you want. I'm not sure. I think the pinch bale should be big enough to accommodate that as far as the spikes inside, but I'm just making it one-sided because when I hang it on my purse, you're just going to see it on one side. But maybe you want this to be a sun catcher, so you could do it on both sides if you want to. It's just however you want to do it. If you want this to be a sun catcher, you could attach it to a chain or you could even just still attach it to this and then hang it on something too. Um, and my hands have oil on them because they were dry and I'm making my little pendant all yicky. That's okay. I'll wipe it off. Anyway, so what I think I'm going to do, let me see how I did this one. So I attached on this one over here, I attached some little baubles to the uh, clasping itself. So I'm just going to grab a bigger jump ring because the bigger jump rings will fit around the clasping better since it's pretty big in diameter. So I'm going to put this one on here. I'm going to open this a little bit more and put it on here. And then now I have this little bobble hanging here. Let's say I want to put a flower on it. So I'll just open this jump ring and put it on this bobble right here. Maybe I want to make that a little longer. Now it's okay. I'm just going to put this one here. Open that more. that there and then on this flower I can open 
see. Do I want a bigger one or a smaller one? I think I'll use a small one. And I'm going to grab one of these and put it on here. And grab a hold of it. And then I can grab, let's see, maybe I'll use this little guy here. And I will put this one not open enough. Open it some more. And put this one on here. Let me back off just a tiny bit here. And I think maybe I'll put a pearl on here. <clears throat> now on this one, I'm going to use this jump ring to make this a little bit longer. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another jump ring Put it on here, and hmm, I think I'll make another eye pin one so I can attach it. So I'm going to make another big one with an eye pin so I can attach it here. And so you get the idea. You just attach them wherever you want to attach them. I'm going to make a couple more and okay. come back. So let me show you what I did. So I just made another one with a head pin and attached it to this one that we attached first to the clasping itself. And um, we had a little flower on it. I just attached another one with a head pin and a couple of dangles on the bottom a bit. And then over here, I put this flower one with a jump ring on the loop itself that's on the pinch bail right there. And now I have a really cute little dangle over my nice big pendant. And this I can hang on my purse on the zipper where it's open on the bottom. I could put it on that or I could put it on a strap or if you have any kind of hardware in your purse, you can hang it on there. Or like I said, you can use it for a sun catcher or you can do the same thing without taking off the bail top part or you can still take off the bail top part. And you can make this into a pendant too, just like this. Put it on a chain and you've got a nice pendant with pretty little dangles around it too. You could even string it onto something with some pearls and some of these other beads on and make it a nice, really pretty focal on a necklace. You could make it a real long necklace so that this hangs down lower on your chest, however you want to do it. But it would be really pretty that way. So this turns out really cute. And then, of course, like I said, you can do it with the butterfly too. And I wanted to use my sideways butterflies in another tutorial for a necklace, but um, you can do it like this too if you'd like. So however you want to do it, it turns out pretty cute. And that is one thing you can do with the rest of the stuff in the box. Okay, so now I just wanted to make a really simple design with these little butterflies that are in your box. There's six of them. And if you look at them close, some of them have diagonal connections and some of them have straight across connections. So I have laid them out in a little design and this is what I intend to do. I am going to connect all of these with jump rings just like this. So I have a diagonal, a straight, a diagonal, a straight, a diagonal, a straight. And on this straight one, I will also attach on this side something I'm going to string with the cubes that you have in your package too. So I have six of these eight millimeter cubes and I'm going to use them and string something in between each one. I have this package of the little metal candy wrapper type beads. We will use those. And I have a couple of um, size two beetle on um, crimp tubes out. I have two pieces of soft flex beading wire. You can use any, any beading wire you have. I happen to be using medium soft flex. I've cut one piece that's 12 inches long and one piece that's nine inches long 
because I want to string the back side of this one, which won't need quite as much, and string this side and attach it to this butterfly. So I have two pieces. Of course, the lengths of those depend upon how long you want your necklace. So I am thinking that I want mine to be about 18 inches, maybe 20, but um, I'm calculating on this side at least 10 inches of space to actually string and two inches to work with with my crimp tubes and on this side less. But the first thing you want to do is just kind of lay out the design you want. I'm also going to use a head pin and attach a cube on the very bottom butterfly so that it gives me a really cute little dangle down here. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five. And I think there's only six in the box. I think I cheated and put an extra one, so I'll put this one here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, because I think I only put six in each package of the box. And I have an extra one. I don't even know how. But you could also use one of these if you still have some of these left, if you didn't use them all already. Um, this is an 8 by 6 rondelle. We could hang that on the end. It's the same color as the cubes, so we could do that too. Or we could put those up here, whatever. I'm also going to use a few of the 3 by 4 rondelles if you have some left. If not, just grab something out of your stash. You don't necessarily need to have exactly the same thing I have. You can also use some of your frosted beads if you'd like because we probably have several of these left and these will look really cute with the blue on the butterflies. You could do that on this side and I might do that too as I do this. We'll just see how I end up stringing it. Maybe I'll do it towards the back where I need to get some length, something like that. So you can use whatever beads you want. If you have some of your pearls, you can use those. Just depends on what you've already used. If you've done the designs the way I did previously, you may have used up some of your beads already. So I'm going to start by getting some of my little jump rings out and I'm going to just attach these butterflies together. So I'm just going to detangle these here and I'll open this a little bit bigger and let me rearrange here a little bit and get you down here. So I'm going to start here and just put these butterflies together with jump rings. And I lay it out first so that I know exactly where I want them to be. And these jump rings are strong jump rings. So they may mess with you a little. But that's better than really weak ones. I don't like little weak jump rings. There's that one. And then I'll attach this one. Keeping in mind that this one you're going to have to attach to too. So make sure you have a straight one there. You're going to have to attach your stringing to it. So you'll remember that the second one, the straight one, is the one you'll attach to. And we can do that with another jump ring or we can just attach straight to it with our stringing. I haven't decided exactly how I want to do that yet. But I'm just going to continue putting my butterflies together and as soon as I have them all together We'll be back and we'll go to the next and step. And now, as you can see, I have all of my butterflies connected. And now I'm going to make a dangle for this bottom butterfly so that this side will be pretty much prepared. So what I'm going to do is I've got a little head pin here. I'll get you close. And I'm just going to drop my cube onto that head pin. And remember, you can get head pins and stuff from Shirley at budgetbeads.shop. She has all kinds of little findings kits ready for you guys. So now I place my brown nose pliers on the wire right up against the cube and then bend the wire over the back part of the plier, just like this. And then I move my wrist to where I turn my pliers vertically like this so that they are now in that bend and then I'm going to bring the wire over the top of the back part of the plier here 
And as I do that, I can turn my wrist and bring the extra wire underneath the pliers and create a loop, just like this. Then I will grab my flat nose pliers, grab onto that loop, switch my hands, because it's easier to wrap with my right hand, <clears throat> and hold it to where the wire is parallel to the pliers. So basically it's the same direction as the pliers, and I can just start to bend. Let me use my chain nose. This excess wire around the wire that's holding the cube. <clears throat> And I'm just going to make a nice little neat wrap. Wrap around it about three times. Just like that. And then I can clip this off with my cutters here. My flush cutters. And try to get it as close as you can. That wasn't a very good cut. But I'm going to try to tuck that in and see if I can get it in. Sometimes you need to hold on to the bottom part of your head pin, too. So I just put my thumb tied up against it so it doesn't spin as I try to do this. Get it in my hand properly and see if I can tuck that in. There we go. Okay, so now I've got that tucked in and I have a little dangle <clears throat> for my bottom here, of my bottom butterfly. So I'm going to open up a jump ring and I'm just going to attach this. Now my head pin was a prettier color silver than these jump rings. These jump rings are stainless steel. They're a darker color, but they go okay with the rest of the platinum findings, but that's what we have. Now my platinum head pins are just really hard to work with, so I just don't work with them. <laughs> so I'm sacrificing color for that. And now I can make a strung part here that I can attach to this butterfly on a jump ring, perhaps. Let me see if another jump ring will fit through here. And I don't think that's going to work. So I'm going to have to attach my beading wire directly to it. I'm going to try this one more time and see if I was just being really weird there or what. Yeah, see, I thought that should work. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Yeah. Um, let me see if I have some movement with them both in there. If I don't, I still won't be able to do it. Yeah, I do. So I can use a jump ring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Now that I know it fits, I can use it as the end to start my stringing. So I'm going to take this off. <clears throat> it's always good to test things first before you spend hours stringing something or making something and you're not sure it's going to work. Make sure you know first. So I'm going to close this jump ring. Now, you can also <clears throat> just attach this directly, too. So let me look and see if I like this better. Actually, I think that's the way I'm going to do it. And you can take a jump ring and put on your um, crimp tube and crimp it around like this. But then we have the, we have to try to get it on here. We'll just do it this way. So, let's do this. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to grab a we're going to grab one of our little crimp tubes and then we're going to grab the butterfly. Now we can take these other butterflies off if we want so that we don't have to work around it, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. So I'm just going to slide it through the loop on the butterfly, just like this. 
and give myself enough room. I'm just going to pull a couple inches through and then I'm going to go back through my crimp tube. Like this. Now once I have it through my crimp tube, you can see I don't have very much through. I'm just going to hold on to that little piece and then I'm going to pull the longer one through because I don't want to waste a bunch of my wire. So I'm just going to pull it through like this. Then I'm going to lay it back in my hand like that. I'll pull this side through just a little more. Make sure it's going to lay the direction I want it to. If it crosses a tiny bit inside my crimp tube, I am not going to con be too concerned. Because sometimes when you do this and you do it very parallel, it doesn't lay correctly on the necklace. It kind of flips around. So I'm going to grab my regular crimpers. And I am just going to grab a hold of this crimp tube. And the second divot of my crimp tube, pliers. Let me show you what I'm doing. So I have this on here, just like this, and I am going to, I have the crimp tube in there, you can see, and I'm just going to squeeze, just like that. Then, in your crimp pliers, you have, or your crimp tool, you have another divot towards the tip here, and you are going to place your crimp tube in there sideways. So you can see after I crimped it, there's a fold in the center here on the other side. You see that little fold? You want to make sure that that is in the crimp pliers so that you can fold it tight together. So sideways like this. And then you just squeeze. So basically what I've done is just encase the wire in two little tubes and then squeeze the tubes together. And I'm going to do that again just to make sure my crimp tube actually crimped correctly. It looks like it did, but I just want to shape it a little. Okay. Now let's see if this is going to lay properly. Yeah. So that's going to lay just fine. Let me back off because I don't even know if I was in camera. I hope I was. So just like this. Now this is going to lay fine. See, if you get really crazy about trying to make sure that they're parallel in here, you're going to get something that flips around and isn't going to lay correctly. So I just make sure it's laying nice and then I crimp it. <clears throat> You're not going to get a whole lot of stress right there. This is going to dangle in the front of your throat, so you're not going to get a whole lot of stress. Plus, this is tight. I can't pull it apart, so it's fine. Now, there's times when you have to be really picky with them, and there's times that you have to actually engineer it a little differently just to make sure that it works properly for what you want it to do. Now, um, we can put a little crimp cover over this. I didn't include any in the box, but we can put one over it. Or, let me see if one of these little um, metal beads will drop over it. It might, it might not. Let's see. Not quite, but it really doesn't look bad either. So, I think... I am just going to start with a little metal bead right there, just like that. And then I'm going to grab one of my cubes and put it on. Or maybe, maybe, just maybe I'll put in, I think I'll put in some of these 3x4 rondelles. You could use a pearl, you could just use whatever you want. This doesn't have to be done the way I'm doing it. Just however, I'm just giving you techniques and ideas. And if you don't have the box, you can use any charms you have on the side or anything. If you have hearts, whatever you have. This is just an asymmetrical necklace strung on one side and linked on the other. And I do this with a lot of different components and elements, and that always turns out really cute. So making sure that I keep my stuff together here. I don't want that excess 
beading wire sticking out. And then I think I will drop on a cube. And then I'm going to drop on another of my rondelles. And then I'm going to put another one of my metal beads on and I'm just going to continue stringing and I'll come back and show you how to measure your stringing to make sure you're getting the necklace that you want, the length you want, and show you what it looks like when we're done. Now, like I said, we can always put a little crimp cover over that too. I might do that, but let's go ahead and keep Okay, stringing. so I had an idea. I don't have a lot of these. This is the one thing that ran out that made me stop making the boxes. Um, I and I didn't get to keep a box for myself. I'm just working with the extras because you guys took them all from me. You bought them all in a matter of hours. Thank you very much for doing that. Anyway, they are there are some of these little tube beads in there, and I think that if we dropped one of these down, it would go right over that crimping. Yep, just like that. I think that that would work fine. And if you have more of them, I don't have any. There's like 20 or 22 or something like that in your package. You could continue working with them. I only have one or two. So I'm just going to drop one on here and then I'm going to continue with my other beads and show you what I come with, up with. And use my cubes and space them out. I want my cubes mainly in front and then I may do something smaller towards the back and I'll come back and show you. But this little tube it has a wide enough hole that that's going to work perfectly right there. Okay, I have begun stringing and, uh, stringing and I will show you exactly what I did. But I've decided on this side of the necklace, when I pick it up, the butterflies flip and do weird things. So I've decided to put two jump rings in between each of the butterflies simply because of the fact that that will balance it a little bit better and keep it from spinning quite so badly. So I'm just going to, I've already put one here and I'm just going to add to it by putting another one between each link. And adding a second one is always a little bit of a chore because they get kind of funny angles, but just put it through there and close it the best you can. see is that closed no of course not all right so let me close that a little tighter these jump rings are really really tough jump rings there we go which isn't a bad thing per se but it's kind of a pain in the rear all right, let me see how that, yep, see, now that's going to give that a lot more balance. So I'm going to continue doing that all the way up. Just adding another jump ring, let me show you. Just adding another jump ring between each connection. That makes it so it doesn't twist. See how now it's not going to twist, whereas this just twists all over the place. So you see how my butterflies just turn? That is... That's annoying. So I'm going to put a jump ring between each one and that will balance things out and keep them from twisting so badly and just give a little bit of a heftier um, strength to the necklace. So I'm going to continue doing that. Then we'll come back and I'll show you how I've strung okay, this. Okay, so I've strung my necklace and I'll show you exactly what I did. But I want you to see that I'm going to make around a 20 inch necklace. So I've strung to the point where I'm almost to the 10. I put two on here, I think I'll just put one. By the time I, ha I put my clasping on here, I'm going to have a 20 inch necklace. And that'd be about right for how I want this to hang on my chest because I want the butterfly and dangle to be a little bit lower. If you want it to be higher, you want it to be up at the base of your throat, then of course you'll, if you're a medium sized person, you'll want to go about 18 inches. If you're a really small person, you'll want to go about 16 inches. So it's up to you. Then of course on this side, we will string to where we're to the same point once we put our clasping on. So. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead, I've made this long enough. Let me show you what it looks like. And I've put my um, double jump rings on this side, which is helping stabilize it quite a bit because it was really floppy. It's still going to be somewhat floppy, but now that when I arrange it and I make sure that it's on my neck appropriately, it will stay better for me this way because it's balanced with two jump rings. What I did on this side, let me get you close, is of course I dropped my long little tube bead right over my connection and then I used a rondelle and a cube and a rondelle and a metal bead and a rondelle and a cube and I just repeated that until I ran out of my cubes which you should have five if you put one as a dangle so I just did that all the way up and then I did a rondelle of metal bead, a rondelle of metal bead, then I went three rondelles and a metal bead. Now I realize I used these in other designs and if you used yours already in the other designs you may not have many of these. However, you can use any beads you want or I do have some more of these. Ma these are magic blue 3x4 rondelles and I have a bunch of them so I have them on my website. So if you want another strand you can get come get another strand of those at ggctreasures.com. Just look under the rondelles section. As you scroll down, you'll see a heading for rondelles. Just grab one of those if you want another strand of them because they do work really well with this. I think it's really pretty. And if you like the way mine turned out, then you may want to do the same thing. So that is available or use your pearls or use whatever you have left or whatever you have in your stash. If you have other rondelles in your stash that are kind of bluish, that would work good too. You could do it all metal beads. You could do it seed beads for that matter. So whatever you want to do, but just know those are available. So now I'm going to clasp this end. So I've got a crimp tube here. I'm going to grab it and I don't know if I have one of my toggles. I had toggles in this box so let me grab one of those out. You could also use one of your um, lobster claws that were in the box too if you want to but I'm going to use a toggle. And I'm just going to put the round side on this side and I am going to... do I want the round side on this side? Maybe not. Maybe I want the other side. So, doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go ahead and put this on. So I've dropped down my crimp tube. I have dropped down my clasp. I'm going to go through the crimp tube again. And I'm going to go through this first metal bead just because I can. So I'm going to. I'm going to make sure that this side is nice and tight. There's not a lot of slack in it. You don't want it to be so tight that your beads can't move, but you don't want any slack either because you need to hold this bead over that connection. So I'm not going to give it a lot of slack here. And then I am going to grab my crimping tool. Now I've made sure that my wires are parallel and not crossed inside the crimp bead. And I am just going to grab my crimp tool in this second divot the one that has a crinkly side and a round side, I am going to place that straight on top of my crimp tube. If I can get my clasp out of the way, I might. So I'm going to go straight on top of it, just like this. Center it in that groove on the crimp tool and squeeze. And then you can see now, if I get you real close, you can see since my wires were not crossed, they're both encased in little tubes in the crimp tube here. It makes a fold down the center encasing the two wires separately. Then you take your tool and you put it on sideways this time, not straight, but sideways like this so that those tubes are touching the sides of the crimp tool. In the first divot, the one closest to the handle, which is round, and then you squeeze again. And then that pushes those two tubes together and you have a nice tight crimp. Make sure you make your loop big enough to where you have some movement around your clasping, but don't make it huge. And then you can just cut this really close to that bead there and one end of your necklace is 
done. So let me back off now so you can actually see what I'm doing. So now this side is done. Now this side, I want to do the same thing. So I'm going to get another crimp tube out and I'm going to go ahead and crimp it on here. And then I will just do my stringing with my metal beads and my um, rondelles until I get it to the length that I need so that it's symmetrical on either side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up my crimp tube this one has a little weird thing on it. And then I'm going to go through my um, link here. And then I'm just going to give myself enough to work with and go up through this crimp tube. And I know my fingers are in your way. Just like this. Let me get you close. So I brought it through the crimp tube. And now, see I have all this slack. I like to pull the long one so that the long wire part here and leave this one short so that I don't waste a lot of my wire. I have it for my stringing. Now I'm making a loop right around, oops, sorry guys, see if it'll straighten out. Focus, focus you. Okay, so I'm making a loop right around that link right there. And again, I'm not really worried if they're parallel or not. If they cross a little bit in here, that's fine. I want it to lay properly. So if it's laying like this and it's, it's laying properly, it seems fine. I'm just going to go ahead and crimp it like that. So I'm going to make this a little smaller though. And I'm just going to go ahead and crimp straight down in the second divot and squeeze. And now you see I have a cramp, but it's not exactly perfect like the other one I showed you. But that's okay because this is how it wants to lay on my necklace. Now I'm going to finish my crimp by making sure that those two little tubes that were created in the crimp itself are touching the um, tool on either side. And then I just squeeze. And now my wire is going to lay the way I want it. Sometimes if you make sure, oh, let me back off. Sorry about that. I'm not very good with the camera today, am I? Blah. Anyway, um, sometimes if you're really careful about having them parallel in there when you're trying to connect to a component or something like that, it doesn't work well. It, it kind of flips around, does weird things, and doesn't lay. If you have it on there and it's laying right, just crimp it the way it's laying and it will stay. It'll be fine. It's not, you know, ideal, I guess, but the other way isn't ideal either because it doesn't lay properly. So, you know, you compromise. I'm going to cut this down. And then I'm going to grab my one little leather tube bead and you have these in your box and drop it down. Now I can begin stringing the same way I strung this side. So I will just pick up a rondelle and um, i cut the very end of that. It's kind of weird. I'm going to pick up a rondelle and then I'm going to pick up a metal bead. And then a rondelle. I'll do. I'll start with my, because down here I did rondelle. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to do it like this. Another metal bead, and then I'm going to go three rondelles, metal bead, three rondelles, metal bead, and then I will put them next to each other, and make sure that I have the same length on either side, and come back and show you how to end it. Okay, so now you can see that I have strung this side very close to the same length as the other side. And I am now ready to go ahead and put my clasping on. I have quite a bit of wire left, but that's alright. I'm going to go ahead and pick up my crimp bead, drop it down, put on my clasp, get you in here, move all this stuff. 
and I'm just going to go ahead and go back through that crimp bead and this metal bead right here and come on go through there there we go and pull this down and align it make sure that this loop is about the same size as the other loop going into my clasping and then this one of course I'm going to try to make sure it's parallel and make sure I don't have any slack so that my little bead down here doesn't slide away from covering the connection and it's not horribly tight I still have some movement for my beads but not a lot and then I'm going to go ahead and crimp in the second divot turn my tool sideways make sure my crimp is in there correctly and crimp again and you can see I have a nice little crimp let me show you and you can always squeeze it again just to make sure it's pretty tight but there we go and then I'm just going to cut this off and let me show you what I have. You can see my messy. As I'm designing, I make a terrible mess. But and let me line this up. I now have an asymmetrical, really cute necklace. I like that. <laughs> I think that turned out really cute. Anyway, there's another project you can do with your box.